Today I'm going to show you how to set up DiG Show, an emulation front end that is packed with customization options and versatility. This amazing tool will not only allow you to easily set up and manage your games, but you can even use it as your default home launcher, so every time you turn on your device, you'll be welcomed with a sleek and personalized interface. I'll walk you through everything you need to get it set up, so without further ado, let's get started. After doing a brief setup on your Android handheld, you're ready to add your front end. The first thing you need to do is to load all our games onto the microSD card. To do this, we need to connect our device to our computer and enable USB file transfer. On your computer, navigate to the folder where you have your game backups stored. On your Android device, navigate to the root of your microSD card. Select the games that you want to transfer and drag them from your left pane, your computer, to the right, which would be your microSD card on your device. You can move over the folders individually or just select them all at once if you just want your whole collection and just drag them over to your micro SD card. You also want to make sure to move your BIOS folder over as we're going to need to move this later. Once you've copied all your games over, we can move on to the next step. To get the latest version of Daiji Show, head over to the GitHub page and click get the latest on the right side. Scroll down to the bottom until you can see the APK file and click on that to download it. Once the download is complete, you'll be ready to move Daiji Show onto your device. Now that we've downloaded the APK file for the latest version of Daiji Show, we need to copy it onto our device. Head over to your downloads folder on your computer and copy the APK file, then head over to your device and paste it into the downloads folder there. To set up Daiji Show and move our games and files around, we'll need a good file manager. I recommend using CX File Explorer as it's a reliable and ad-free option that'll meet our needs. To begin, open up CX File Explorer and grant it access to your device's storage. Then move to the Downloads folder and locate the APK file that you downloaded previously. Once you've found the file, select it and choose to install it. We need to grant permissions to the File Explorer to install apps from unknown sources as this wasn't on Google Play directly. Then we can proceed to installing Daiji Show. Set Daiji Show as your default home launcher on your device, press the home button. A prompt will appear asking you to set it as your default home launcher. After installing and setting Daiji Show as the main default home launcher on your device, you may want to customize the app settings to your liking. In the Daiji Show settings menu, make sure you enable the disable player warnings option. You may also want to enable the clear all disjointed items on sync. This will clear out any items that have been deleted off your device. If you don't want to hear any button sounds while using the app, you can also disable this option in the settings menu. Another handy option to select is to make sure that you select your home page is set to either platforms or whatever you feel like choosing. Highlights might be a good option if you want to directly boot into your favorites menu. We can also enable retro achievements here if we want to use the widget for it. In the Daiji Show More Appearance Settings menu, you can also customize the layout of the buttons to your liking. If you prefer the Xbox style layout, you can swap the positions of your A and B buttons here. To set up our systems in Daiji Show, go to the Platforms menu and select Download Platforms. Scroll down the list and select all the systems you want to have on your device. You can always add more platforms later if you miss something or want to expand your collection. Just repeat these steps and select any additional platforms you might want to download. It's possible that you may encounter an error message when you import the platforms into Daiji Show. However, this error message shouldn't affect the functionality of the app and it won't reappear again. The screen might also flicker as it loads the default wallpapers in. Head over to the settings menu and navigate to the appearance section. Under appearance, you should see the option to download platforms wallpapers packs. This is where we can download and find new themes for the Daiji Show front end. Go ahead and select a new theme if you want one. Keep in mind that as you add more systems later, you'll need to download the same theme again to include the new platforms. Once we've downloaded that and we head back to the platforms menu, our new wallpapers pack should take effect. If you didn't select it properly before, it'll pop up again asking you to set Daiji Show as your default home launcher. Set as always and it'll launch directly into it when you boot the device. Pressing your home button again should take you back to whatever default page you selected previously. As RetroArch is going to emulate a large portion of our games, we need to get that next. 
On the main website, hit download and then scroll down until we see the Android APK. Under the Android section, make sure to download the 64-bit version. Once it's been downloaded, make sure to copy it over to your downloads folder on your device so we can install it from our file manager. You can easily access CX File Explorer from your apps menu. Before proceeding using RetroArch, make sure to allow it to access read and write permissions to external storage. Once the app has been opened, the default configuration file will be saved. Navigate to the settings menu by tapping the gear on the right side. In the settings menu, go to the driver section and change the menu driver to XMB. This menu driver makes it a lot easier to navigate RetroArch. After making this change, make sure to press the home button on the right side of the menu, scroll down to the configuration file option and save the current config to apply the changes. To close RetroArch and reopen it with the updated driver settings, make sure to press the home button on your Android device to return to the home screen. Then access the recent app drawer and close all the recent apps. This will start up RetroArch with the new menu driver. To access the list of available cores, tap on load a core, then select download a core. This will bring up a list of all available cores that we can put on our device. I recommend checking the description below for a list of recommended cores. From the list, select the cores in the systems that you want to use. It's generally better to use the standalone versions of the emulators rather than the cores for systems like PSP, 3DS, GameCube, Wii, and Nintendo DS. You'll find the standalones for these instead of the cores working much better. After you've downloaded the necessary core files for the systems you want, make sure to head to the general options menu and quit RetroArch to ensure the changes are saved and the app is closed properly. To move your BIOS files to the correct location for RetroArch, first open your file manager, then navigate to the folder where you've stored your ROMs and your BIOS files on your SD card. Instead of copying the entire folder, make sure to open it and go inside the folder, then select all the files, cut the files so you can move them from this location, then press the home button in the top left corner to return to the default screen of the file manager. From there, tap the main storage and open the RetroArch folder. Then navigate to the system folder. This is where you should paste all your BIOS files that you backed up. To link your games to the front end, tap on the Paths menu and add the path where you've stored your files for each system. To do this, press the menu button on the top left corner and navigate to the appropriate folder. Once you've found your folder, select Use this folder to allow the system to link your games to the front end. After linking the folder, make sure to tap the Sync button to begin loading the games into the front end. While the game data is scraping, you can swap between the list and the grid view. If you prefer the grid view, you can switch to it now. How long it takes to scrape your game data will depend largely on the size of your collection. It shouldn't take too long though, but your game data should already start to load in. With the game data correctly scraped, all we have to do next is hit the little pencil in the bottom right corner, scroll down until you see the default player settings, and make sure it's selected correctly for that system. I'm using the RetroArch 64 and the Flycast Core, so this has automatically been selected for Dreamcast. Make sure to save any changes as needed. We need to launch a game to make sure that everything is configured correctly. Once you've confirmed that your game loads correctly, you can go on to configuring the rest of your systems. To link the rest of your systems, just follow the same steps for each one. The first thing you need to do for each system is to select the game path and link all the games to the front end. Once the path has been linked, make sure to scrape the directory to retrieve any game art or other information about the games. The next thing you need to do is just to make sure to edit the platform to ensure that the correct core or the emulator is selected properly and save the changes. The last step to make sure your system is configured correctly is to launch a test game and to confirm that it works properly. This process may take some time depending on the number of systems and games you have. Make sure to follow the same four steps for each one of the systems you're linking. Select the game path to link all the games, scrape the directory to retrieve the game art, edit the platform to ensure that the correct core or emulator is selected correctly, save the changes, then launch a test game to confirm that everything is set up correctly. For some systems like GameCube, Cube, it's recommended to use a standalone emulator instead of the RetroArch Core for optimal performance. 
Nintendo 64 and any other system that requires a standalone, we can set that up after we're done linking the RetroArch course. We can also add the path, scrape the game data, and come back to linking the standalone emulators after we're done with the RetroArch course. To set up DS emulation, you can download Drastic from the Google Play Store. This emulator is a paid app, but it's been proven reliable by many users and is well worth the purchase. Once it's installed, all we need to do is add the path for the DS games, scrape the directory to make sure we get all the game art, then just make sure Drastic is selected as the default player for the system. To make sure everything works on the standalone, make sure to launch a game to make sure it loads correctly. Make sure to give standalone emulators access to your device's files. If you tap on the up arrow at the bottom middle of the screen, it'll bring up a menu where you can turn off things like the on-screen controls if you're using this on a handheld device. Exiting Drastic should bring you right back to the DS menu. Get the latest version of PPSSPP, it's recommended to visit the main website and download it there rather than the Google Play Store. If you've already linked the PSP directory, you may have noticed that the standalone emulator was auto-configured even if you haven't installed it yet. We can go ahead and install the standalone emulator now if we've copied the file over to our downloads folder. In order to function properly, PPSSPP needs to create a folder for the memory stick data. It's recommended to select the folder where the PSP games are stored for this purpose. Once the folder is linked and set up, you can exit the emulator. When you select a game from the Daiji Show menu, it should start up directly without the emulator interface appearing beforehand. For optimal Saturn emulation, it's recommended to use the Yabasen Shiro 2 instead of the RetroArch Core. This emulator performs much better and is available for download from the Google Play Store for free. You can also buy the paid version if you prefer. Once it's installed, link the directory of games under Daiji Show and select the emulator as the default player for that system. Make sure to test the game afterwards to make sure it starts without any issues. There are many versions of Dolphin, but I downloaded the latest MMJR variant to my device. Once it's installed as usual, just go ahead and scrape the directory to get the game information. Daiji Show can occasionally detect which standalone emulator you have installed if you go launch a game first before setting up the default player. In the highlight section, you can see your favorites menu as well as any new games that you've added to your device. To add a game as a favorite, hold down on the game and tap add favorite. This will add the game to your favorites list. To remove the on-screen buttons when using RetroArch on a handheld device, go to your settings menu and scroll down to the on-screen display. From there, select on-screen overlay and disable it. Make sure to save the configuration file afterwards. Give it a test afterwards to make sure those on-screen display buttons aren't showing anymore. To fix any hotkeys in RetroArch, go to the settings menu and scroll down to input. From there, go to the hotkeys menu. Hotkey enable is a button you need to hold down to enable your hotkeys. Many people use select for this purpose. Menu toggle can also be set to any button you prefer, but it's common to use L3 and R3. Quit and fast forward toggle can be set to any buttons you like, but it's good to consider buttons that are easy to reach on your device. For example, you might want to use the start and select buttons to quit, but you might also want to use the left and right bumpers for load and save states. Once you have your hotkey set up, make sure to save your configuration file and quit RetroArch. If you notice a game is not scraping correctly, you can fix it by holding down on the game, selecting edit item and changing the scraper text. Make sure to add the revised title to the list below and hit save. Afterwards, make sure to rescrape the system and the new artwork should load. To delete an item from your library, hold down on the item and select Edit Item. Choose Unlink File, then confirm the action and select Delete to remove it from your library. Now that you've finished setting up everything on your device collection, it's likely that you have everything looking great. If you forgot to add Daiji Show as the default home launcher, you can easily do this by going to the apps drawer, opening settings, and searching for home. This will bring up the default home launcher option, which you can use to set to anything you prefer. If you want to use Daiji Show as your main interface for your device when you start up, make sure to select that now. 
I've been really pleased with Daiji Show and it's become my primary launcher on all my Android devices. What are some of your favorite features in Daiji Show and what do you enjoy about the launcher overall? I hope you enjoyed the process of setting it up and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below.